Hey guys, Sin here, and today we're going to be working on another one of the major sticking points that guys had when I did my last survey. This is all part of the Game Acceleration Doctrine release and my upcoming How to Become Your Own Pickup Guru um, coaching program. So one of the things that a lot of people had, in addition to approach anxiety, which we already talked about in the Game Acceleration Doctrine, running out of things to say, which I covered in the last audio product I put out for you guys. The next one that we saw all the time was, I know how to get into conversations, I can open, I can do this, that, or the other, I can get attraction, but I can't escalate. And so escalation really is the entire game. If you're not escalating the interaction, you're really not going anywhere. My buddy Brad P says, blow me or blow me out, and I think that's a great, a great way to kind of look at this, because... When you're out and you're meeting girls, you have to reframe internally what you think the enemy is. The enemy is not the um, blowout, right? The enemy is the 20-minute set to nowhere. When you're out at a bar or a club, you generally only have between four and six hours. So it's really important that you don't waste your time with girls that are not interested in escalating. Right? Now, that doesn't mean that if a girl's not going to escalate but you like her, you, you leave, but it means that if you're specifically going out to work on your cold approach skills and to work on getting laid, then you have to be looking for those girls that are willing to escalate with you. All right, so there's a couple different ways that I'm going to talk to you guys today about escalation. The first one that I'm going to talk about is baiting. One of the things with escalation is that escalation unknowingly falls into Mystery's old model of bait, hook, real release. So what that means is that you're always going to bait for escalation. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. The first one is saying things ambiguously like, what do you mean by that? Or what are you looking at? Or what are you talking about? Why are you doing that? Why are you looking at me like that? What's that? Because what that does is it creates a space where the girl can go sexual. Um, ambiguity is one of the best things that you can add into your game because confusion is very similar to arousal. The more you can get a girl confused, the more she's not sure whether you like her, whether you mean something sexual, whether you're just messing with her, whether you're enjoying the social company but you're not really sexually interested in her, the more she's going to be interested in you because she wants to figure it out. Women are meaning makers. What that means is that they're constantly looking for what does that mean. So by going ambiguous, you can create a safe space for her to go sexual. Now, before I said something kind of interesting, I said that escalation falls into the model of bait hook real release. What does that mean? Well, you're going to bait, so you can say something ambiguous, right? It's going to hook or it's not going to hook. Another example is the concept of prepping, which I think myself and Future introduced to the community. And prepping is simply letting her know what's going to happen later on in the interaction. So for example, the classic prep that I'm pretty well known for is you take any compliment. So I'll give you guys an example of a sexual frame. One of the sexual frames that we're always trying to set is the girl is independent. So I'll say something like, you know what is really interesting about you? Is you strike me as a really independent person. Like I bet you're the type of girl who if her friends didn't think she should do something, if you wanted to do it, you'd do it anyway. And I really respect that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm totally trying to get in your pants, but it's rare that you meet girls who are that independent and make their own decisions. Like, are you really decisive? Bait, hook, real release, right? It's but the, the bait is the compliment. By giving her a compliment, I'm baiting her in, right? It hooks when she answers that. She's like, yeah, I am. And one of the things about um, sexual frames is that you always want to make sure that the sexual frame is a positive female stereotype. Adventurous, independent, sexually aggressive, um, knows what she wants, decisive, etc. We'll talk about those a little bit later. But the bait and then the hook. You can't escalate if the girl is not hooking. So in that example, right, with prepping and sexual framing, if I go, you're a really independent person, and she goes, no, I'm not, I'm not, it hasn't hooked. I have to go backwards. I have to go back into attraction or I have to go back into comfort, but I'm not able to escalate currently, at least not right there. Um, another example of that is if she goes, oh, well, I have a boyfriend when I say I'm trying to get in your pants, so it's not going to happen. Now, that's an example of a sexual shit test. And a sexual shit test is something that is my forte. A lot of my game and sexcalation, which I'll be talking a lot more about in the coaching program and in some other stuff coming up, 
is all about prompting and then passing a series of sexual congruence tests or shit tests, right? Um, for example, when I was out in Boston uh, about a year ago, I guess, maybe maybe a little bit less, uh, I had a whole lay where I went from meat to sex with a girl by just telling her I liked her, she was my physical type, and I was trying to get in her pants. And she kept saying, well, it's not going to work. And I said, well, we'll see. I'm very charming. Um, and she'd be like, well, I'm not sleeping with you tonight. And I'd be like, I believe you think that. I'm like, well, we'll see. We're that, that, that part hasn't been decided yet. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But the idea is it's the same concept behind passing a congruence test and attraction. You agree and exaggerate, right? You agree and say cocky things, right? That's, that's where David D'Angelo's cocky funny can be really, really um, useful is when you prompt and then pass these sexual congruence tests, the girl will get more comfortable going sexual with you because she'll see that you don't get thrown off by it, you don't lose your composure, um, you're stronger, you have a stronger frame, etc. A lot of really attractive things. But the idea is you're going to have to hook that escalation. So for example, the hook that happens with um, I'm trying to get in your pants or I'm trying to hit on you is she'll say at least you're honest. That's, that's generally the response that lets you know it's hooking. Um, and in that is the idea of passive frame control, which I've talked about in a few videos before, so I don't want to get back into that. But baiting, so we talked about baiting through prepping, we talked about baiting through ambiguity. The next thing I want to talk about briefly is statements of intent. You have to have the balls to give statements of intent. That's things like, you're really, you're really awesome and sexy. Like, I'm, I'm starting to like you. Wow, you could be trouble. Oh my God, why are you so awesome? You suck. Now, statements of intent are kind of a weird word for them, and I just use that because it's an accepted community term. What you're really doing is you're giving escalations with releases. So, for example, you can say something like, oh my God, if nobody was here right now, I would totally bend you over this table and take care of business. Right? Um, that's, that's what we call a negated escalation. The release actually comes before the escalation. But just the fact that you're saying that, and then you have to release it again, right? You go, if nobody was here, that's the first release. Hardcore escalation. I'd bend you over the table and take care of business. Oh my God, what are you doing to me? Get away from me. And actual physical um, de-escalation happens there. That's a big thing of this. You can't verbally escalate at the same time you're physically escalating because it's too much most of the time. Most of the time, you're going to want to physically push her away while you're verbally escalating. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is sexual frames. Sexual frames are frames that are conducive to bringing out the right subpersonalities. In every girl, there's a personality that wants to have one-night stands, that wants to be sexually aggressive, that wants to do slutty things, because those things are fun. But she has the societal programming that won't let her do it. So we have to set these frames that allow her to act in this interaction as if that's okay. The key sexual frames are sex, she's sexually aggressive. You can set that with things like strawberry fields, with things like Captain Jack's version of the rings on fingers routine, um, with things like early on in the interaction, teasing her about being aggressive. You can be like, oh my God, you're the aggressive one. And then later on when you do any routine that kind of frames her as sexually aggressive when she likes someone, it has a stronger backing. The next one, non-judgmental. We don't judge. I don't judge. You don't judge. We're not judgmental. We don't care about what other people think. That's a huge one. The third one is that we don't kiss and tell. Discretion. Discretion is a really big one. In fact, I'll go out of my way to tell stories about discretion where I talk about how a female friend and I slept together and then I got text messages from a bunch of people in our, in our social circle saying, I heard you and this girl hooked up, which is actually a true story. But... Um, it's, it sets this, the frame that I don't kiss and tell, and then I think that's really tacky. All right, so this brief video on escalation is going to get you guys started on what to do when you're in that conversation and you're not really sure where it's going and how to move it forward. You want to bait. You want to make sure it hooks. You can prep. You can use statements of intent, and you can use sexual frames, like the first three that we just brought up. Um, all of this stuff is going to be gone over a lot more in depth for the guys who sign up for the Become Your Own Pickup Guru uh, coaching program. And as well as I'm going to be giving out more gifts um, and writing some more articles on escalation. So make sure that you check out my blog at sinsofattraction.blogspot.com or you can see it on my actual site at sinsofattraction.com slash capital B blog. All right, guys, till next time. See you around.